two, one. This is a new episode of Electric Podcast. I am Fred Lambert, your host, and I'm joined by Seth Wintraub. How are you doing this week, Seth? I'm good. All right, let's jump in. We don't have too much news this week, but uh, that's going to give us more time to take your comments, take uh, your subjects uh, that you want us to discuss this week about the EV world and uh, any question that we, we can answer. So you can put that in the comment section right now uh, since we are live and uh, we're going to get to them in a few minutes. But in the meantime, we're going to still have a few interesting stories to discuss. And we're going to start with Tesla Gigafa Gigafactory Quebec, which is something that we've discussed a little bit in the past. And it was I was always prefacing it with the I, I'm biased, obviously, because I, I would like Tesla to come to Quebec and everything. But now, like, so I wasn't just like, I was reading, I was consciously conscious about the fact that I might be reading too much into things, thinking there's going to be Quebec. But now it's starting to look like strong evidence that we might get a Tesla factory in Quebec. And maybe uh, if I get too uh, crazy about it, that's, you can you can play devil's advocate a little bit here. But the new evidence is, I mean, the biggest one here is this new hire that Tesla is looking for in, in Quebec for high volume recruiters. So uh, why this is interesting, it's interesting because it's a, a role that Tesla has been looking for uh, back when, it was the early days of Gigafactory Berlin and Gigafactory Texas. This used a similar language about the recruiters that they wanted to hire in the region, uh, which is looking for a high volume recruiter. And um, in this case here, the job posting is for uh, is based in Montreal, but it's it's the it's called Recruiter Dash Quebec. When Tesla used these kind of uh, naming scheme for for their position when there's a dash and then there's a either like a semi or or like a market next to it is like it's for the whole market so it looks like this is looking looking for high volume recruiters to cover the province of quebec so we don't know exactly where but there's been a bunch of other indication lately about this getting into not necessarily quebec but at least canada uh, we discussed about the comments that Elon made at a company might, wide we meeting in June where he specified that the next North American factory might not be in the U.S., but in Canada or Mexico. And then uh, uh, he repeated Canada again uh, at the shareholder meeting when someone like, yeah, maybe Canada. And he's like, he, point, he, he singled that one out. So we started thinking, okay, maybe this is, uh, this is really something. And then, of course, last month, we learned that Tesla has filed with the uh, first, with the Ontarian, uh, Ontario government, so for the province of Ontario, uh, to lobby for uh, accelerated uh, permits f to be part of a package to poss possibly uh, establish a factory there or a manufacturing facility, they called it. And uh, then we learned that uh, Tesla also filed with the federal government there to help them uh, negotiate with provinces Again, accelerated permitting is their main thing. Like they, they don't they don't want to recreate a Gigafactory Berlin where they're stuck in a bureaucratic nightmare for a year. They want they want something closer to Gigafactory Texas, which is like, you guys are spending <laughs> the money, you can build. Like you know, just do it. Um, now Canada is certainly in my in my experience closer to Germany than it is to Texas in terms of uh, uh, bureaucracy and uh, and especially like environmental assessments and things like that. Uh, we are pretty severe on that. But we also open for exceptions. Like there's been a few exceptions that's been made uh, more recently in Montreal with uh, Moderna. Uh, since we don't have any vaccine production in Canada, uh, the government was very nice to Moderna to uh, uh, speed up the process for them to start building their factory in Montreal. So there is room for exception. Um, so yeah. Then earlier this week, we heard through Electrify Autonomy Canada that uh, Tesla has been visiting Ontario and Quebec, uh, specifically for visiting Vail's nickel operation in Canada. But they said that they used that visit as also an excuse to um, scout some potential site for factory, both in Ontario and in Quebec. Then we learned yesterday exclusively at Electric that Tesla visited uh, Nouveau Monde Graphite, which is a, a graphite mining and processing company that's based in Quebec. Uh, they have a mine uh, in Saint Michel, uh, about uh, two hours from uh, from where I am. It's um, about two hours north of Montreal, and uh, they also have a or they're currently building a processing plant 
in uh, what 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 is now called Quebec's Battery Valley. So there's mm. been a ton of investment around the, a town called uh, Bécancourt, which is just uh, on the other side of the river from Trois Rivières, which is a bigger a bigger city in Quebec, uh, right in between Montreal and Quebec City. And a bunch of companies have established there from uh, B A B A S F, uh, POSCO, uh, Livent. Uh, basically, they are making all the cathode materials and uh, in terms of Nouveau Monde with graphite, they're making the anode material for batteries. So all the components, the critical materials, the battery are being processed there. So it makes a ton of sense that someone would build batteries there. Um, now with Tesla, Visiting the company, of course, it's might, it might be just for supply agreement, but for supply, for supplying them where, that's a big question. And obviously, a lot of companies lately have been going to Canada to secure critical resources for to make batteries uh, due to the recent change of the tax credit in the U.S. that now accounts for uh, a certain percentage of the critical materials for the batteries need to come from either North America or countries that have free trades agreement with the U.S. And that limits primarily, <clears throat> primarily China. And in terms of the graphite, like I think 60% of the graphite comes from, from China or something like that. So there's one thing that I, I, I don't know Seth, if you know about it, but uh, I need to look into it more, is that for the critical materials, does the critical material needs to, the, if the, like, for example, there's a lot of lithium, cobalt, um, nickel even I think that is mined in Australia which has a free trade agreement with the US mm -hmm. but then it's processed, processed in China yeah is, th is that okay or, or with, with the with the new bill or is, is it not I, th I think that's kind of like in the fine print and I think yeah. there's like a percentage that it's okay but I think like the overall has to be like 80% or something and then it changes for another year I'm not uh, super up to date on it but you know, I'm sure somebody's going to put together like a nice flow chart or hopefully the government does on what needs to happen. Yeah. And I'm sure all these companies are, are thinking about that. Um, so you asked me previously to play devil's advocate. Go for it. It's hard. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it seems pretty overwhelming. But, uh, you know, we do know that uh, Tesla goes sometimes for two different places so that they can play each other, uh, you know, play off each other. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of Texas, that was uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, which, of course, there's also a rivalry between Oklahoma and Texas. So that makes it even more, more uh, you know, uh, combative, I guess. So uh, theoretically, Tesla got a much better deal uh, in Texas because the thought of them going to Oklahoma was probably, you know, not a, not a great thing. And I'm sure, you know, mm -hmm. Oklahoma was obviously uh, playing, playing pretty seriously to get it as well. So, and then... Um, so, you know, I remember you had a great source that was able to help us um, find out that it was going to be Austin before it was officially announced. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, person at all involved in uh, th this this part of the... I, I It might be work for me to check it. I don't know if it's since it's in Canada, it won't, it won't be the accessible mm -hmm. to them but it might be worth to, to check uh it might be too early though it might um, like you said i think at this point tesla might still be pinning uh ontario versus quebec right now to mm -hmm. to get the best uh possible deal but um i think i think I, I like quebec's chances because i don't know about the permitting process and i've been looking into like is there anything that anything that's been proposed on the legislature level to uh, to create like exceptions that um, i mean you can still create exception, but I don't know if like if, if Tesla would need any actual changes in the law. But there's nothing really coming for now. But uh, one thing is that I think incentive-wise, like actual like money incentive, I think the fact that Quebec already unlocked billions of dollars for battery production uh, to be made in Quebec, I, I think like they probably wouldn't even need to approve uh, a new like big package for Tesla to build a factory there. They could probably use that. Uh, so that that could be very interesting here. Now, th there's the possibility too that it might be not like a gigafactory like with vehicle production. It might just be a, a battery gigafactory. We don't we don't know. That's something to keep in mind too. Uh, the way I see it, because especially if Tesla has been poking around uh, in uh, in the Battery Valley in Quebec, 
that they could probably establish a battery production facility there that would make a ton of sense and everything. But if we're talking about a full-scale gigafactory with vehicle production, which requires five to probably closer to 10,000 employees, I don't know if the region would be great at supporting that. Like it's probably possible, but it would require like we a lot of people would need to move to to make it happen. Probably, um, it's just uh, I mean Quebec still has a I think we have a four person unemployment rate right now, an historic low. So it's not like the jobs are uh, that's everywhere. Need, yeah, and then everywhere these days with the labor shortage. But like you would need to convince people to move there. Um, so maybe something closer to Montreal would make more sense. It's a much more popula uh, population dense area. Yeah, I see the comments of people already uh, in my post this morning. I reference uh, Grand Bay area, Bromont, Bromont, Grand Bay. That that could make a ton of sense. And someone you go, I think, uh, in the comment just mentioned it too. Yeah, uh, because that would make sense because. Uh, well, there was already production. Uh, you mentioned the Hyundai plant. There was a Hyundai plant here. It has been closed for, for years now. Uh, but there's a lot of industries there, a lot of uh, engineering, a lot of uh, high-tech companies too. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of high-tech companies there. And uh, some Tesla suppliers there too, I think, uh, already there for like uh, steel parts and things like that. So that that could make sense, and that's uh, only that's less than an hour away from Montreal. So I was thinking something probably a, a model close to what Berlin has. It's, you know, Gigafactory Berlin is not in Berlin; it's about an hour away from Berlin. Mm -hmm. uh, so something like that. I was thinking maybe Drummondville too would make sense. Uh, I think I think Hugo also mentioned Sorel Tracy, which could could also could also be a possibility in my opinion. Valleyfield, yeah, maybe Valleyfield. Uh, that's really close to Montreal, though. But it's mm -hmm. also close, yeah. It's close to the airport too, so that that could make sense. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of possibility here. Uh, but um, I'm gonna. I, I've been I've been spending a lot of times on this lately, because I, especially now this morning, since I I've seen this uh, job posting, I'm like, oh, like this is starting to get likely. So I start poking around all my sources that might know something in Quebec, see if they know something. Want to be the first to know if uh, it's actually happening. Yeah, you're gonna but buy some also, adjacent property too. And <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I, I would have time to do that, but um, I mean, I'm I have a pretty big property here near uh, Battery Valley, so that's that uh, I'm excited about that because re at least regardless of where it's going to be in Quebec, I think Battery Valley, uh, which is like 35 minutes from where where I am, is uh, is going to benefit for it anyway. But if it's not Tesla, anyway, someone is going to build a battery factory there. I think it just makes too much sense. There's uh, there's a, a port there too. Uh, 12 Rivera's port is a big, big uh, shipping port, and uh, there's um, there's just all, already all the components you need to make a battery is there. You just you just need someone to put the cells together. Though all those companies are already pre-selling all their capacity. I know, like uh, GM has bought the uh, capacity from Livent, uh, that uh, that's the lithium processing plant there. Uh, they also have the POSCO plant for their cattle processing um, uh, material. So very exciting stuff, at least. But uh, yeah, Tesla would definitely be like the what do you call it, the anchor project for for something like that. Like, oh yeah, and it would start up, you know, a bunch of other, you know, side business suppliers would have to set up shop there as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, speaking of Gigafactory Berlin, too. Uh, last week, Tesla invited a bunch of uh, analysts, their Wall Street analysts, to take a tour of the factory and. Uh, we got a little bit of tidbits of information coming out of it. Some people saying that uh, Tesla didn't want to disclose the actual production rate there just yet. We know it's over a thousand. They reach a thousand in June, and some drone video so shows that there's a nice flow of Model Ys uh, getting out of the factory. And uh, now we have uh, Pierre Faragou from New Street Research that uh, commented on the factory, and he said that I was very impressed with the efficiency of the of the plant. I'm quoting here. Compared to Fremont, Berlin is visibly much more efficient. Logistics inside the factory are much simpler, erased by ducts surrounding the fab from all sides and ensuring parts come at the right place in the manufacturing chain. The single manufacturing line is designed for a cycle time of 45 seconds and will deliver 10,000 cars per week at full capacity. Uh, on a side note, it takes just about five full days nonstop to do 10,000 cars at 40 seconds, uh, 45 seconds per car. Uh, so this target accounts for a healthy 25% downtime. 
Most importantly, cars are manufactured today with the rear casting and will shift to rear and front casting as soon as the 4680 structural battery packs will be available. So yeah, I, I've, I've read a few notes from a few of the analysts that were at that uh, event, and most appear to say that uh, they expect Tesla to switch to the 4680 in the structural pack at Kia Factory Berlin within the next few months. So uh, maybe not by the end of this quarter, but probably early next quarter. And yeah, many of them are putting the capacity at close to 2,000 units a week now, which is a, a starting to be significant volume for Tesla Gear Factory Berlin. But yeah, this is encouraging. Like the Tesla to achieve 40, uh, 10 thousand units per week, uh, they they would they can do that in five full days of production. So and obviously, they, I think they're gonna still produce the weekend too. So they can. There's definitely room to grow there. And uh, also, Faragu noted that uh, Tesla is facing unprecedented demand. Uh, which we kind of already know with Tesla <laughs> stopping to take some orders on some variants of their vehicle because of it. But at the same time, they, they was in Europe. Tesla did, uh, we discussed that last week, Tesla launched the Model Y uh, standard range there. So at, at a very attractive price, uh, but that might be more of a result of the BYD blade batteries. We're not so sure. Yeah, it wasn't even, sh we weren't even sure up until this point that um, Berlin was going to, do 4680s it was mostly texas that we had been hearing about right yeah or did we do we know that well i mean i think 4680 like it may tesla just didn't have the volume and makes more sense to send them to texas and then send them from fremont to texas and from fremont to uh right to berlin so i think there's just like we won't they probably won't have it until they make them there i would assume so it sounds like they're plan on making 4680s in Berlin and within a year. Yeah, or maybe once they also they plan to do production of 4680 in Texas by the end of the year, and once they have that, maybe Fremont starts to ship them to uh, to Berlin since Texas makes their own. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Or perhaps uh, wasn't Panasonic going to make some? Maybe they make some in Japan and send them over. Uh, yes, but that's. Uh, I think that's going to be not before Q2 next year, if I remember correctly. Uh, they use the like financial year differently, but I think like it's like March, starting in March 2023, that the year start, and they said that it's that year that the first 4680 are, are going to ship from Panasonic. All right, we're seeing some indication too that the semi program is uh, moving along. Tesla is ramping up, ramping up hiring of semi <laughs> semi service program, which uh, of course that uh, brought everyone starting to joke about. Yeah, Tesla service has always been semi and whatnot, <laughs> but this is obviously about the Tesla semi electric truck. So Elon recently said that the the 500 mile Tesla semi is going to start shipping the customer by the end of the year, and of course, if it's in the hand of customer, Tesla has to service those vehicle last year we start we, we reported on this the first launching is a semi service program that's the actual name of it uh that uh, they start hiring technician but uh, it looks like it was just in fremont and in uh, uh, nevada and reno where tesla operates their own tesla semi between uh, gigafactory in nevada and uh, fremont factory but um, now tesla has expanded they, they, they put a new job posting where they're looking for positions in Fremont, Sacramento, Modesto, Central Valley, that's all in California, and Reno, Nevada. Uh, and they specifically say in the um, job posting that uh, whoever is hired for those positions will be the first technician to provide in-person service to our new customers. So this is actually for uh, people that, that uh, are customers of Tesla's uh, the semi truck, not uh, internal service that like it has been so far. So uh, everything points to deliveries. I mean, uh, I could expect them any day at this point. Uh, we don't know exactly where we're going to be the first one, but it's going to be at one of those locations, most likely. I think it's in Modesto that uh, the free... Yeah, Modesto is the Frito-Lay factory that um, Pepsi is one of the biggest customers of the, the Sasama truck, or at least for pre-order-wise. And uh, the uh, CEO of... I don't know if it was... Oh, yeah, CEO of PepsiCo... Uh, said that they were expecting them last year and Tesla, of course, uh, delayed the whole program. But uh, I would expect they're probably going to be amongst the first to get the, the trucks. And um, it does seem like it's all West Coast at this point. Um, if you're an East Coast uh, Tesla semi customer, it doesn't look like uh, 
there's going to be any service in your area for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I think I think like I don't know what kind of volume estimates we can we can put together here, but I, I would be shocked if Tesla deliver more than like 20 trucks to customers this year, and that that would already be pretty good, like uh, a pretty decent amount. Um, but uh, as far as we know, the production is still completely coming from that Nevada factory that we um, just outside of a gear factory, Texas, uh, and um, so. I, until they move production to Gigafactory Texas with higher volume, and I, until they get 4680 in higher volume, because I, I assume that they switch the design already to 4680 for that truck, uh, then I don't think we're going to see any significant deliveries. And as usual, Tesla for the first deliveries they focus on closer to the factory. Right. Uh, so in, in this case, the West Coast. All right. There was this comment from Elon Musk that got the media blaze this week. They were. <laughs> I was looking at all my media alerts and it was all the same headline. Elon Musk is calling for more oil and gas and like, oh, like he's like now that he's going Republican too, like and now he's been completely captured and he's been going, <laughs> we're going like, let's drill, baby drill. But obviously his comments were way um, more specific than that where he was just, uh, it was at an energy conference in Norway and of course, Norway is a big oil state, uh, even though they're also huge on electric vehicles. And he was referencing the fact that he, uh, he has an understanding, which everyone that has a brain should have, that if you stop uh, producing oil right now, the whole economy would collapse and the whole society would collapse. Really, civilization would collapse. Uh, so you understand that while we need to accelerate the push to electric vehicles and sustainable energy, in the meantime, we need to uh, to drill oil and to, uh, to to supply the country, and that, that's also in the context. It was in Europe, and Europe is also having an energy crisis right now due to a restriction on Russia. So, so this is this is within this context here. So there was, if you've seen those headlines this week, uh, I mean, I'm, you, you can have your disagreement with Elon Musk, but I don't think I don't think his comments were really well, uh, like says world still needs oil and gas yeah of course he still needs oil and gas elon musk world needs oil and gas or civilization will crumble obviously uh so i don't know why yeah I mean. but i feel like that it was purposely taken out of context for specific needs for instance i feel like um some of the republican senators uh maga senators uh said stuff like without oil and gas the world will crumble yeah. and and uh i feel like i i saw one of I, I somebody tweeted it without any context and saying you know like you can't get rid of oil and gas well that's that's not really not what he was saying here he's just saying yeah. at this very moment we need oil and gas because there's a lot of infrastructure that requires that so and he did say to be fair he did also like he probably thinks that more exploration might be needed uh and and that that's fine it's just like at the end of the day all we need is make sure that we're not incentivizing the wrong thing though because obviously you can also deploy uh solar energy you can deploy wind you can deploy like he also said something about you should be more off uh shore windmills in uh the north sea uh like people didn't care about that like yeah. you know, like the Thank drilling you. part was more uh interesting but uh, all you need to do is just make sure that we're we're not in, like subsidizing oil again, um, which is, doesn't make sense when you account for the impact it has on the environment. So, uh, but at the same time, it's not a big deal because solar and, and wind are just becoming too uh, viable financially. That uh, for the most part, the money being invested is all going that way instead of going to fossil fuel at this point. Yeah. All right. Uh, Toyota. Toyota has a change of heart in the uh, doubling down on the electric vehicle now and tripling their funding for the U.S. battery factory. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the new uh, federal incentive for electric vehicles. It's just Toyota finally just came to their senses and like, we need to go big on electric vehicles. Uh, but uh, yeah, Toyota, uh, they have this uh, plan coming up in Liberty, North Carolina. And it was already announced, but they are, we're only investing $1.2 billion, which sounds like a 
only, but it's still a decent amount. But it's uh, actually not that big for a battery factory because if you, batteries are viable in an extremely high volume. And if you're putting 1.2 billion, this might be like a, a 10 to 20 gigawatt hour per year. It's not that much. But they announced that they are ramping that up to $3.8 billion, so a significant ramp up. Uh, they haven't disclosed the production capacity that's going to come out of that, but I would assume that uh, now we're, we're we're getting closer to a, I don't know, a fifty to a hundred gigawatt hour battery facility here. Yeah, and for Toyota, which is I think still the world's largest uh, auto producer by it's volume, not, I think so. Yeah, yeah, by actual vehicles, I think that's not a huge amount of batteries for them still. Especially for how many they sell, how many vehicles they sell in the U.S., they would need a few factories. Yeah, they would need new models uh, to to put those batteries in because the BZ four uh, X right now is not uh, flying off the shelf really, uh, <laughs> especially with the the wheels the, falling off. Yeah, already the recalls on it and everything, and also I think people when they think EV, they don't they don't think about Toyota. <laughs> no, and and you know the. Uh, um, Subaru version of that is also not doing terribly well. I just also I don't think they have very big allocation for the U.S. market either. So it's not right. even even if the demand was there, they, uh, I don't think they would uh, sell any kind of uh, significant volume. Uh, electric boats. We have the Vision Marine here. It's actually a Quebec-based company. Uh, they uh, they just broke the record for the fastest uh, boat uh, electric boat. They went to the Lake of the Ozark show, uh, shootout, which is a like a very big event for for boating companies, where they uh, they basically they drive like maniacs on the water. And <laughs> um, two years ago, Vision Marine uh, broke the record for the fastest uh, electric boat there. I think it was 55 miles per hour, and that might not sound like much, but on the water, 55 miles per hour is extremely fast. And uh, they decided to break their own record this year with their new Emotion uh, powertrain. So Vision Marine, they make their own boats, their own electric boats, uh, some some pleasure boats, some speed boat. Uh, but the, the real project that they're working on right now is uh, an outboard electric uh, motor for boats. So we see, we see, see them here. So it's something that could be uh, implemented on basically any boat that use outboard motor. Uh, so their emotion system as a, a battery pack that can be integrated into most boats, and then you can put the uh, electric motor, electric elbow motor on it, and turn your boat into a an electric beat beast. Uh, in this case, they were working with LCAT power boats to create this uh, little catamaran like, speed boat, and they managed to achieve a hundred and nine miles per hour. I don't know if I can spin the video; it's going to be super loud. It's not going to be loud. It's a uh, yeah. But still, I mean, the pro just the propeller. Oh, they have the music too. On this. this this is pretty crazy that you have a boat going 100 miles per hour and you don't you don't really hear it. Uh, but 109 miles per hour on the water is is absolutely insane. And uh, now they, they have this deal with uh, Group Beneto, uh, which is one of the biggest boating company in the world. Uh, they own a ton of different brands, and um, they're gonna implement their boats their outboard motor on those boats so that they can go electric so it was basically a showcase of what the technology can do here yeah i wonder uh, we see a lot of uh, new uh, electric boats coming out some have um, hydrofoils i wonder if uh, hydrofoils count in that category and if you can get a lot faster with those things because there's a lot less uh drag there yeah I'm always a little bit concerned about hydrofoils because, like, when 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 I go boating, like, I'm always like, even even like in a little canoe or something, I'm I'm worried about like algae. I'm worried about uh, rocks, like hitting rocks with my propeller, my, my propeller. Uh, and so, with an hydrofoil, I would be like super worried because it's even much deeper in the water. Like, it freaks me out. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know exactly how deep those things go, but um, yeah, it's definitely deeper in the water, at least from. From the start maybe when it's actually boiling yeah. it's probably up a little but higher. The, you're, you're worried is especially like closer to to uh the shores like right. when, when you're like uh, docking or something like and when you do that you're not at high speed so the those hydro full are deep in the in the water so right. i assume you need like a deeper water uh marina or something yeah and and then the, the nice thing is like you don't hit the waves because you're riding through the water but yeah that's cool 
also like if you hit something it's it's pretty much over for, for you right like, yeah like the hydrofoil hits something on, yeah. on the ground and you're just gonna start flopping well, yeah yeah all right aptera we've been we've been really hyped about aptera um the uh they're getting closer to production but now they, they we reported like a few months ago they closed that they were crowdfunding and we're always a little bit careful about crowdfunding electric vehicles because uh it's hard to bring an electric vehicle to market uh it's extremely capital extensive and when um you bring crowdfunding into it you bring like small investors it's it can get shady pretty quick and uh but aptera why i'm hyped on it is like this is actually not a, a car this is a the classified as an auto cycle it's basically a three-wheel enclosed motorcycle so in terms of the regulation to bring it to market it's it's a lot easier uh so a, a lot of people like ask me like uh, why you know you guys don't report on atlas uh the pickup truck company that's uh crowdfunding uh, um that, that's crowdfunding a pickup truck i'm like i i just I, I don't think like I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> it's just that the, right. they they're spending so much money on marketing. Like the, you open your Instagram if you if you ever typed electric vehicle in, in your life and Instagram knows about it, they are, they're gonna they're gonna show you an ad of Atlas and they're not selling their pickup truck. They're selling their their crowdfunding and uh, bringing a pickup truck to market. It's at least like four hundred to a billion four hundred million to a billion dollars. It's gonna cost you. I just don't think you can crowdfund that. I'm sorry, uh, and uh, I, I think that people that invest in that could use their money. So I, I, I don't want to promote that, especially if I, I put their chances of ever delivering something to market at like one or two percent. But Aptera put them closer to like maybe like fifty percent because they, they, it's not like a car. It's, it's basically a motorcycle. Yeah, uh, but way safer obviously <laughs> and also more useful than a motorcycle uh, utility wise and i just like this idea of like just pushing efficiency to the top so i think there's a and there's definitely a market for it because they announced with this new fundraise they announced that uh the uh, just reached 20 uh 30, 000 reservations uh so that's 8000 more than a, when they closed the last round and uh for people who invested with full disclosure i did invest in the company just a tiny amount uh, if you invested in the last round, that was at nine twenty a share. Now it's at ten fifty a share. So, uh, even though you have no money, way to exit that investment, you still already made some money technically. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is this is this bring the valuation though at seven hundred million dollars, which I think is a lot uh, for the company that hasn't delivered anything yet. But they are relatively close to bring it to production, at least low volume production. They have a facility already. They are deploying production equipment there. Uh, I don't think they can deploy high volume production but that's what this new round of financing is for uh, so they can probably reach production with their current investment but with a, a new round of investment they're gonna uh, be able to produce more but thirty thousand people like I, i'm just very happy that the fact is the thirty thousand people that are actually interested in that vehicle that shows that there is a market for just something that's super efficient and the solar aspect of it all is also interesting where you, you, can, you can you just technically you never have to plug that car if you drive less than like 20 30 miles a day on it yeah that's super cool idea yeah i'm i'm not invested but i have a reservation for for one mm -hmm. of the cars so i'm fully hoping this comes through i i do think the price is a little bit high for uh the level of uh you know, quality that you're getting it does have a solar okay, panel the, the price of the vehicle here not the price yeah of the, yeah so it, it's like a, around thirty thousand um, dollars yeah, it starts at 25 so for twenty five thousand uh, dollars, the same price as a, a Chevy Bolt currently, uh, nice electric <laughs> vehicle that uh, my mom just picked up. Uh, you get a you know admittedly a lot less uh, utility vehicle, certainly uh, more fun to to look at and it charges itself. But um, you know twenty five thousand dollars for a uh, you know motorcycle level of um safety uh quality you know you're kind of you're kind of uh you're throwing a little bit of money at this i'm i'm involved so i'm mm -hmm. i'm in it i'm in it too but um 
yeah, I don't know if they're going to go high volume at that price. If they could get the price, you know, under twenty thousand, maybe they they um, uh, they qualify for some of the the seventy five hundred dollar uh, tax credits, stuff like that. Um, then it's going to be a more viable product, and obviously they have to actually make the product. Um, they did have a an agreement with uh, Taiwan in Taiwan to to build the thing as well. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe that's how they get to market. Um, so the product itself is, seems like a, a product that people want. Um, I certainly am interested, but it's the little details of actually building it. That I are think they are building it in California though. I think Taiwan is, uh, an agreement to, to build some parts of it, but I think the final assembly is going to be in, in California. Yeah. And Taiwan might actually sell some in Asia or something like that as well. Oh, okay. It. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I agree. It's, it's. It's expensive, but I, this can be, it's not a full car replacement. Obviously I'm not right. saying like, Oh, you buy this instead of a model three. Uh, but you, 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 it can replace most people's commute really. Cause most people's commute is like by themselves or maybe someone else. Right. And, uh, this is going to be more efficient than any electric car out there, safer than a motorcycle or an electric bike, but also, uh, enough storage space where. You can also stop at the grocery store and, and, and get some groceries and you have no problem. Like you can see the, the trunk here is significant, really. And so it can be, uh, it can not fully replace a car, but it can replace a lot of what a car can do. And that will that would uh, just make a lot of mileage a lot more efficient overall, I think, uh, which is the goal. All right. I think we're already done for the... Uh, news yeah. part of the week we can move into the comment section if you guys have any comments put them right now we're going to discuss them all right we already talked uh, about hugo mm -hmm. uh, let's move on uh very exciting news about possible nmg and tesla relationship Are you familiar with this nmg is the nouveau monde graphite that i talked about earlier so the, okay. the graphite company so if you remember i said the nouveau monde graphite was actually a sponsor of electric uh oh that's right 2019, when the CEO, Eric Desonier, created this video where he was talking to Elon Musk, basically like a funny little space ball like video uh, to convince Elon to reach out to them and everything. Uh, so we did promote that back in, the, in back in the day. And it looks like it worked. <laughs> he finally got Tesla's attention, but like two two or three years later. That's pretty cool. Um, we had if we if that happens, we had a small part in that, I guess. <laughs> Uh, moving on, uh, electric cars are cool and all, but are not going to save the planet. Oh, that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. We need less cars or fewer cars, not more. Tire pollution and brake dust hurts us more than emissions. Wow. Curious your take without the Musk bias. So, oh, you know, I've seen it's a raven, like uh, other comments, everything he thinks we're like Tesla fanboys or anything. I don't think we're going to be able to convince him, but we did talk about the uh, brake dust and also that's not how you spell brakes, but um it's just not accurate it's not more polluting it's just more directly like i do i, I do think there is value in that in that thought process though for a lot of people that are like yeah climate change they're not so sure like yeah, the 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 earth always like go into cycles and whatnot and everything like people that says that like you you won't be able to convince them otherwise anyway but what you can convince them is like Actually, even if you don't believe in like, or if you believe in climate change, but you, you think it's not, it's inevitable because that the herd goes through cycles and everything. Do you believe in air pollution? Because like you see in big cities, they have like zero. It's not about climate change anymore. It's about like direct air pollution in those cities. Like a lot of European cities have these uh, restriction often when the smog gets too big, where you on, only the uh, license plates that end with uh, a, a pair number versus a um, what's it in English? Uh, you have a even an odd, a, even an odds number. Like one 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 day it's a even number and the other day it's an odd number that or you cannot drive. Like these these things are serious, and no, these things are not because of brake dust, uh, the entire pollution. They they are because of exhaust. Uh, but tire pollution and brakes dust are definitely a problem, and I would agree that if you can drive uh, to work, go to work in your electric motorcycles or, or uh, a bicycle, electric bicycle, that would make a lot more sense. And the for the brake dust, I never use my brakes on my electric car. Like uh, 
the, the I use region baking, so there's definitely no brake dust on electric vehicles or a lot less brake dust. Yep, all good points. Hmm. All right, and there's no such thing as green tires. Actually, uh, they are like the new the, the new tires the are greener ones, yeah. still. Yeah. All right, on the other side of the fence, we have Grandmaster UV. Love this channel. Love you guys. Thank you. Hmm. All right, uh, we'll just get some of those raving yeah, things. Yeah. Quebec, the hydroelectricity is obviously one of the biggest advantage too. But uh, uh, Ontario also has a lot of hydro, uh, but it's I think it's cheaper in Quebec though. I think the hydroelectricity is cheaper. Oh, we should check this out about yeah. Valley Field, Quebec, as a potential Tesla site. There's a study published in 2019 about the potential of that municipality. Uh, Hugo mm-hmm. seems like a, a good sleuth. Maybe uh, yeah. send us some some of your findings. Yeah. And then, all right, Gaukur Ponzi question. I thought the qualification for the EV tax credit is for the vehicle to have four wheels. Yeah, that's a good point. No, uh, no I don't. I don't think Aptera is going to have that. Yeah, yeah. Um, they would have qualified for some money under the old credits, which I think they got like twenty five hundred for motorcycles. I think uh, yeah. Zero was getting that. Yeah, but I was yeah, actually would... kind of surprised that there was nothing for two or three wheelers yeah i mean for motorcycles i don't know how big of a difference it would make like how big an influence it would have um but for for the ad terra it would make sense i think because you actually you you could that money could not only like it would help like the sales period but it would convince more people like to like hey, maybe i can live with an ad terra instead of a full-size car like yeah. it would make sense for a lot of people to just make that switch so it would be a very nice incentive in my opinion yeah, I think the Aptera is a good second car. Exactly. If you, yeah. if you have like, you know, two people who are driving and one of them can kind of get by without, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I think that that's that's a sweet spot there. I mean, that's what it would be for us. All right, Dan Oberst, all the Atlas prototype is the size of an F650, too big for high volume. I mean, do they even have a prototype? Like, do they build well, something? No, or? I don't think they have a working prototype. Uh, I think they have a lot of like foam, <laughs> right? <laughs> Still prototypes that are just are not working. I don't. I don't. I'm just not that. Uh, I don't believe that they have much to um, to work with right now. Yeah. All right, uh, Doug Grinberg's question: Are you following Automotive Part Manufacturers Association of Canada Project Aero Zero Emissions Concept Car for possible production? question mark yeah i i not too closely uh, i did last time i checked it was still like renders and, and things so i wasn't i wasn't too impressed uh but for production though i'm not uh i'm not so sure if it's for, for production to be honest I, I thought it was more like uh to showcase all of the different suppliers in canada that could support uh automotive production like it's from the automotive part manufacturer association so i thought it was more something like that and then you make like a one-off to, to show that i didn't i didn't know that they were looking for a possible production that would be news to me hmm. all right that's pretty much it for the comment section all right well it was a quick one this week hopefully we have a bigger week next week more news to discuss and now uh, we can uh, get to them with you but uh I hope you guys have a nice weekend. You stay safe out there. We're going to see.